Hey YouTube believers, Chris Matt coming at you with an action figure I've been wanting to review for a while. Today we are going over the McFarlane DC Multiverse Superman Action Comics 1000. And I remember when I first saw this figure, I had no interest in it whatsoever. But you know how time passes, you kind of look at things and uh, kind of changed it. It grew on me. It started to kind of have more of an old school Superman feel. So. I grabbed one, and the way that I kind of grabbed it was is it was at GameStop, and uh, it, it was kind of banged up as you can see here on the top. You know, like the packaging here was off, this was ripped, and then on the back here it was torn, and I was just like, Rrr. but thankfully the uh, person that was the cashier was really cool and gave me a discount on that, so I very much appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you all do want to pick up this figure, please first and foremost support your local comic shop and see if they have one in stock or if someone has traded one in. If not, I noticed Big Bad Toy Stores and Dorkside Toys is sold out. So you're probably more likely going to have to go through the secondary market at that point or check out GameStop's website. It, it will say in-store only, so call your, your local GameStops too and see if they can get one in stock. With that said, we see Soups. Love the logo still. Superman, you know, you get the 22 points, McFarlane Toys. Get the Superman there on the side logo again. You get the cover from Action Comics 1000, which we'll go over in a moment. Here's all the figures from this line that you can get, so I will make sure to get a close-up close on that for your convenience. Come around to the side. Again, love how they put the name on the side. It especially helps the way I'm set on my studio so I can actually see what I'm looking at on my shelf. Come around to the front, Superman again. Nothing on the bottom. So, with that said, let's get the Man of Steel out of his packaging and get a closer look at him. So I will say right off the bat, this figure has already done pissed me off. I got it out of the packaging. You know, I went to pull him out of the, uh, the bubble whatever it's called and his legs snapped off you know I can understand you know like a, a piece popping off if you're being a little rough with the articulation before you warm your figure up I, I can get that but you're literally pulling them up out of the packaging and the leg pops off come on that's some piss poor quality right there so excuse me just just not okay. Not okay. Thankfully, I was able to get a lighter, warm up the pegs inside where the leg was, and warm the leg up till it was almost super, super squishy. Took it in there with some pliers and just held it together. It's loose, but it's there. And uh, we shouldn't, you know, us, the people who buy this stuff, we shouldn't have to do this. You know what I mean? We shouldn't have to live in fear of pulling our, our figures out of their packaging for them to dis get destroyed. Okay, rant over. As you can see here on the stand, nonetheless, it's a gorgeous looking figure, especially kind of in his vanilla superhero pose. Very cool. I, I just wish there's a way, you know, I wish that we can get the wire capes already, but c'est la vie. So the irritating leg out of the way, I'm liking the way this Superman looks. Um, because this is one of McFarlane's earlier pieces, there's a lot that's gonna get on your nerves. But there's still a lot that you're going to love because this looks like a classic Superman. So let's get him off the stand and look closer. Superman's backstory we already went over when we did the uh, DC Collectibles uh, Cell Shaded Jim Lee Signature Series. So if you want to check out that video plus his backstory, I'll leave the card up here somewhere for y'all to click. So don't worry about that. Now the uniform here, McFarlane chose the cover of Action Comics 1000 which was from June 2018, and I will say 99.9% .9 of all the stories in this comic are fantastic. It's, it's very much a love letter to Superman. They're all different tales, and it's from like decades of Superman writers. Dan Jurgens, of course, being one of the ones to stand out. Um, I don't remember there being a John Burns one, which is kind of sad, but from what I read, um, they said that they uh, allegedly contacted him and he declined. I don't know how legitimate that is. Let me know down in the comments. 
So with that out of the way, let's check out all the accessories that he, the Superman does come with. <clears throat> he comes with a pair of, so he has the fisty hands as you see here on his waist, and then he also does have more like his flying whooshing hands, I guess you could call them that. I'm gonna start just calling them the whooshing hands, but as you can see here, the skin tone, very nice. I'm glad that it matches the figures. You can kind of see in the blurry background, but you know, whenever you see paint apps that don't match the skin tone, it's very frustrating. Relatively good attention to detail. You can kind of see the veins and the detail of where a human anatomy would be. One thing I like about these hands is unlike the uh, Legends where it feels like you're gonna break something when you pull their hands out, this is just a plug and it just goes bloop, bloop. Very, very well done. So you just put it right on the peg. Though it can be kind of frustrating when you're trying to depose a hand and then it just falls out. So again, those are the hands. And then he comes with, as I smack the light, and I'll try to get a decent shot on this, but it's hard because it's, it's uh, clear. But it's one of the flying stands. I like that they put the DC logo there. And then the head here, you know, you close it. You can get it, kind of the pose of the flying there. Let me get another focus, because these things drive me nuts. There we go. You can either do that to kind of get a flying one, or standing, or more of a taking off pose. But yeah, this thing is very flexible. You can also take, hold on. Oh, it doesn't want to come off. All right, I'm not going to try to do this on camera. There you go, Superman. But here you can pop this piece off, and then it just becomes a regular stand. But because I'm trying to record, you know Murphy's Law, it's not going to let me do it that way. So, say la vie. The last thing that Supes does come with is, of course, like with the rest of all the... Um, action figures that have been thus far, which I appreciate because I'm a card junkie. I uh, was actually watching the an episode of, of uh, what's it called, Comic Book Men, and the guy came in showing all his old school Marvel trading cards, and they were talking about how they're still not worth anything. And I'm like, I don't care, man. Those things to me are still like the nostalgia for them. And you go through them and just waves of like <laughs> the awesomeness that was the 90s. So getting a trading card like this, I'm super happy with and it's the cover of action comics number 1000 i'll get a shot of the back of the card so you can read it at your convenience and now let's go ahead and talk about the paint apps on this figure so as i said yes the leg popping off oh god that that just very frustrating that's probably about as irritating as when i did the poison ivy uh the what was it yeah the poison ivy hush review and i was trying to do the uh other ivy and her arms snapped off and i was just like are you are you serious but anyway we're, we're gonna mosey on past that i like the blue in soups his eyes of course there's gonna be sh deep shadow so it's gonna be hard to show you but his eyes are blue i do like this giant red s on his chest because i always the only time i feel like they can get away with a small s is when you do the golden age superman especially like the old uh what was the guy's name, Flesher? The old Flesher Superman cartoons? That's the only time I feel like the S can be small. But any other than that, I love that it's here. It's right in your face, knowing that the Man of Steel's come to save the day and save Earth from whatever's gonna try to destroy Metropolis this week. <laughs> uh, he does have the cuffs from Rebirth, which is okay. I'll let that pass be because we have the red trunks, the yellow belt, and it is almost 100% old school accurate. The blue is perfect. I like how you can actually get the ab work, even though it's not cell shaded like the Jim Lee one. You can still see where his abs would be. The anatomy is correct. Very cool stuff there. And then I like how you get like a little bit of Kevlar, you know, because they had to update the suit as usual. But I'm glad that they really kept a majority of all his old schools looks, especially like the lines in his boots. That's very much akin to a uh, Early 90s, mid 80s, love that look. The only thing that will kill, that does kill me, well, we'll get to that in a second, the hair, I want to talk about the hair first, looks good. And what I do appreciate is back in the day, you know, you didn't want to do hair all black because it was just like a big blob. 
So if you read a lot of the old school comics, you'll see that there's like blue in the hair and that is to symbolize like shadows to show that it is black. So I'm glad that for this they actually added that blue. That's a very nice touch to that era of comics. And again, as I was just talking about a moment ago, skin tone. Very, very nice. I like the cow look, and I'm glad that they, for the most part, made it look like it's, it's not like attached, like it's not an actual um, piece. So be careful, but that's a nice little addition instead of like all the old toys where they would be glued to his forehead. This paint splotch here, I'm definitely going to have to get some uh, rubbing alcohol because at first I was like, wait, did they give him the mullet from the 90s? But yeah, that's a paint splotch, and that is... Again, as I said a moment ago, that's some piss poor quality, but we'll let that go. I like the cape here, how it runs down. You see the back of his neck there, and just it brings everything together. So minus some of the production flaws on this particular figure, and I'm sure it was like just this one. I bet you 100% everyone else's is just dandy. <laughs> uh, very well done. So... I'm happy with the way he looks, paint apps, other than the... Rah! Everything else is fine. I'm happy with it. Now for the early McFarlands, as I was talking about, there's some articulation problems that are, that are just going to drive you up the wall and frost you there. <laughs> so the head, you know, it, I tried to warm this up best I could, and that's why I always say warm up your figures, but he can look down about that much. And he can look up about that much, not bad. Twist, twist, arms, can go up that much. He does have an upper uh, bicep swivel there. Arms can go 360. And I do that, like that he has a little bit of a butterfly joint. Kind of like how I was talking about the Az uh, Azrael review. There really should have been a butterfly joint so that his arms don't look so gorilla and just very unnatural. It does have semi double jointed elbows. Yeah, about 90 degrees, so there's that. And then the thing on the hands, these early ones, I didn't realize the leaps and bounds that the newer um, McFarlane DC Multiverse figures have come, but this ball joint. These ball joints on the feet and the hands on these earlier ones, so, you know, you can twist the hand up, twist the hand down. But the problem, with, especially with these earlier ball joints, is they're so noticeable. And whenever you try to move the foot, see where the, the pivot is, it moves with it. And sometimes when you try to move the foot back, that anchor point there is going to move back. So you, you got to make sure you have it right so you can move the foot properly so those early ball joints ugh, on these figures really chap my height and of course the hands do go 360. He can twist his that way that way ab crunch and then he twists he kind of bends both at the ab here and then down here towards the waist so you can kind of get him down about that far and even with the cape you can get him back enough for some good flying poses there, so that's good. And then look at how, because of this leg popped off, look at how flip and loose that is compared to that one. That's that's some bull caca. Anyway, oh, oh. leg can go up about that much. And then, of course, this has the butt shell there, or the butt flap, so you can't really get him to kick back without pushing out, which I think is really dumb. So, again, that's just the flaws of these earlier figures. Same thing with the earlier figures. There's no upper thigh cut. I checked. No. Does have ratcheted double-jointed knees, so thankful for that. Foot can go up. Foot can go down. The pivots at the toes. And then, of course, he has, again, because this thing's twisting, you have to... But he does have a little bit of a ankle pivot so you can at least move them around that way but see how this thing's already moved on me so I gotta move the ball joint grab the foot 
and try to bring it all back to one cohesive whole here. It's, it's almost like it's a freaking transformer. That's what I talk about when I say I hate these ball joints. So other than that, and the lack of a thigh cut, you know, overall, the articulation's really well. At least you can get some different dynamic poses, and with that, I'll, I'll let the other stuff go. Size comparison-wise, here's the McFarlane's Infected Superman, and here's the cell shaded Jim Lee series that we were talking about just a little while ago. And I think all three of these figures in particular are beautiful. Now, aesthetic-wise, I always find my eyes drawn closer to the cell shaded one. I don't know, just the sleekness of it, plus the the shading, like I thought when I first got this, I was going to hate that, but it just really makes the figure pop. And I remember during the New 52, how they gave all the heroes collars, and I, that, that was one thing that was just a big turnoff for me on the figure and the comics during this era, because I'm like, what is this, the 80s all of a sudden? But really, what makes this stand out for me on this particular figure is when you go to the back, I like how the cape droops a little bit, and that there's an actual S on the cape, even though during that time the S was black, which I don't know why they decided to change that. But nonetheless, on this figure, that looks gorgeous. So, with that being said, I think the one that really gets my um, motor revving in terms of the, the way the body looks is this Superman. Like, if they decide to re-release another classic-looking Superman, keep the design. They got it right on this one. But use this body mold. I don't know, just the big beefiness of it. This just, to me, would be Superman, that very brawler. And this one, just like this one, captures that old-school Superman look. But obviously, you don't, you know, because he was the infected, they washed, they kind of faded out the, the uniform. So it's more of a, a purplish color. Though I do love the battle damage, and I wish they would have put, just like with this one, I wish they would have put an S. That's what's drastically missing from these Superman. But yeah, if they decide to release another Superman, they really need to use this body mold. Because the, the Superman that we're focusing on, this one right here, he's a little too lean. And yes, Superman is lean, and some of the heroes are lean. But, you know, these are, this is the Man of Steel. <laughs> and just like with Batman, I like to have a, a brawler-looking character. I mean, with Superman, you know, he gets his powers from the sun. So even looking more lean, he has these superpowers. That's why with Batman, for me, it's, it's hard to see him as a more lean figure. Like Frank Miller's Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, he was older, obviously, but they had that beefiness about him really showed he was a street brawler. And just the same thing with Superman, even though he's supposed to be lean, as you can see during the New 52, seeing him as a big bruiser like this just shows the power that encapsulates, encapsulates and I cannot talk this morning, you all know what I'm trying to say, but it, it captures Superman. So out of the three, this one still has that classic look that I really love. I just wish that they would have taken this design Put it here, because at least when I took these two out of the packaging, their legs didn't snap off. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to let that go. That, that just frustrates me. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I really do love this Superman. I love all three of them, and I can't wait to put all three of them together on a shelf and then maybe see what type of like multiverse photography I can get with it. Let me know what you all think down in the comments below. I will be honest. I like this figure. It's just when that leg popped off at the beginning. <sighs> oh, just let's 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 worry about some quality too, guys, when the figure is released. You know what I mean? Because you get a beautiful figure, but you don't care about the quality of it, then it's just gonna snap. So you know you wanna keep us coming back then indeed. Which I will say, McFarland Toys now, like the newer super, uh, Batman figures and whatnot really come leaps and bounds because this is one of the early wave ones and it's still beautifully sculpted. I mean, you get the light hitting the S and the cape and it, this looks like a classic Superman. And in regards to that, the only thing that chaps my hide is not the yellow S. That would have been a nice addition because that's just old school. I know that, that it's not there in modern comics, but, you know, for the 
uh, early modern age, and of course silver age and golden age. They always loved that yellow S. Oh no, not in the golden age. Silver age, I believe so, but they had that yellow S on the back of it. Just something that I miss. And you know, it made it more iconic, like on the death of Superman, where you see his cape with that S flying, um, all tattered and torn. Just a very beautiful, symbolic image. Ugh, as I digress. But this figure, definitely worth your time. I mean, if you want kind of an updated Superman, I would highly suggest this Action Comics 1000. It encapsulates everything that we've loved about Superman growing up, even with the trunks, which is like, thank you, thank you for adding the trunks. So with that said, if you all have enjoyed this figure, please first and foremost, as I said at the beginning, check with your local comic shop. If not, there are other avenues that I uh, tried to throw out there for y'all. And if you've enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate it if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you can possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little super bell next to subscribe, that way as we continue to upload content, you guys will get notified. Come to the channel, and we love talking with y'all and hearing your feedback and just, you know, yip-yapping with y'all down in the comments below or our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description. So with all that said, thank you so much for stopping by. Photo slideshow coming up next, and I hope y'all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading, and happy hunting, true believers.